Hi, I'm John Williams, and I'm here to uh, share another Bible study with you. We're going to talk about the power of our words today. Let's begin with prayer. Father, we love you. We thank you for all things. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity to study your word today. Help me by the power of your Holy Spirit to deliver it with clarity. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So, the power of our words. Um, the Bible is very clear about our, the use of our words. There's a lot of scriptures. Uh, I, I love the book of James. It talks about uh, the use of your words, how powerful that is. And all throughout scripture, we see that. Uh, starting even from Genesis, God said, there's three words common uh, in the book of Genesis that's used nine times. The, the number nine is very significant. It's like it represents the completion of God. And three times in Genesis, God says, and God said. And God said. And God said. Well, let there be light. Let there be firmament, etc. Now, couldn't he have said all those things in, in, at one time and, and got it all done? Of course. But he said it nine times to give us insight on the power of our words, right? There's something about saying, using your words. Uh, prophecy changes the direction of people's lives. You know, a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, healing is all initiated by the power of what? Words. At the same time, we can encourage an one person and discourage another with the same word. So you have to be careful what you say, how you say, and understand the power of your words. We're going to discuss some of those topics today, uh, starting with uh, Proverbs 18.21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So you will literally uh, create your reality based on what you say the most and of course out of the abundance of the heart the mouth what speaks so what's in your heart uh, I know for me I, I, I'm a dreamer you know I'm a visionary and a lot of the things that I'm believing God for uh, I say you know, God, God was one who, who speaks things that are not as though they were. So he, he, he uses his imagination and he'll say something. You know, once the last time, I used to do that all the time with my children. You know, I would speak life over them. You know, like, you're really smart. You're going to be an amazing engineer. Or you're going to be an amazing musician. You know? You know, you're, you're so smart, you're so obedient, you're so... Why? Because that gets down into their heart, and before you know it, they're saying it about themselves. All right? Uh, John 14, chapter 14, verses 13 and 14, it says, And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. You notice that it's initiated by words. What we receive from God, what we receive for ourselves, it's, it's born out of the words that we say. Moreover, the words that we believe, the words that are in our heart, and the words that we say. Job twenty two twenty eight, Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. Yeah. So you literally create your life. You, you literally create what it is you want. So what are you saying? You know, I say, I say over my business all the time, my business is successful. You know, I'm a number one best-selling author. My films are going to be blockbuster films. 
I say that. I prophesy over myself. Even. I use words. Um, and sometimes the enemy will try to shut you down and keep you from using your imagination and thus your words to create uh, the intention and the destiny God has for you. And we can't let him do that. Numbers 1428 says, Say unto them, As truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Numbers 1428. There's a great example in the Bible. The uh, Tower of Babel. And God gives us insight. He gives us insight of this principle. Genesis 11, verses 6 through 9. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, and they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime, and they used for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. I'll read that again, chapter, uh, verse 4. And they said, Go, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men build. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restricted from them, which they have imagined to do. Let's read it in the NIV. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech, and people moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, Come, let us make bricks and make them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens, so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. Verse 5, But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. The Lord said, If as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. What is your dream? What are you dreaming about? What, what, what's your goal in life? What do you see? Where do you see yourself? Do you see yourself traveling? Do you see yourself uh, building a wonderful business? Do you see yourself on stage singing, dancing? What do you see? My next question is, what do you say? I'm going to be one of the most prolific engineers in the world, and I'm going to create new inventions never created before. I'm going to be a business owner, and we're going to serve people worldwide. I'm going to be an actor. I'm going to be one of the most sought after actors in the world and I will star in blockbuster movies. What are you saying? 
sometimes the enemy of our souls will come along and say, oh, you, know, you can't, who do you think you are? You can't do that. You can't do this. I don't know. No. Shut them down. Say, be quiet in the name of Jesus. Jeremiah, I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So you can springboard, springboard off of those words and then create your own for your life, biblically. There's another story in the Bible that highlights the power of imagination and words. Mark 5, verses 26 through 29, King James. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all she had and was nothing bettered but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, come to, came into in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And straight away the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith have made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Here's the thing. The way the King James Version uh, reads, it doesn't give you the full picture. In other words, when she heard that Jesus was coming, not only did she say, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. Other translations say, she continually said that over and over again. She said that out of her heart. She imagined it. So much so, back in the day, if she had that kind of issue, she was considered unclean and should not have left her house. Yet she did. She even pressed through the crowd. By touching other people, she was making them ceremonially unclean and to touch Jesus she also would have made him ceremonially unclean didn't matter to her she said said if I but touch the hem of his garment I will be made whole so she put her words into action that's the key Whatever it is you're saying, whatever it is that you envision, whatever dream, imagination you have, you have to put it to action. Number one, write it down. Write it down. Make a plan. Remember the Tower of Babel? They planned and said, correct? Power of your words. And Jesus said unto her, Daughter, thy faith made be whole. So saying the words that you want and then making actions, making, making activity to create that is an act of faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. He honors faith. Words. What are you saying? What are you saying about yourself? What are you doing about what you're saying? There has to be action. It has to be action. Here it is. <clears throat> Second Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Casting down the things you do not want, 
and speaking the things that you do want. Speaking the things that you imagine. Every building you see, someone had to think of, had to dream of that first. Name it. Cars, boats, clothing, songs, films. The business methodology. Someone had to dream of that first. Right? And then they put it into action. God honors that. Here's another uh, example. 1 Samuel chapter 17, 46 to 48. Talking about David. David was a, at the time, a shepherd boy. But he communed with God. He had a relationship with God. He praised God in the field all those times when his brothers were doing whatever. He was out there with the sheep. But he had a, a knowing of God. He imagined, uh, you know, someday that he would do something great. <clears throat> when David came against Goliath, now, believe it or not, his he was bringing food to his two brothers. And David had asked, well, what's going on? And his brothers told him, well, you know, there's Goliath. And the king said that whoever would slay him, he would give him you know, gold and, you know, his daughter to marry and he, all these things. You can look it up in Second Samuel 17. Uh, for the interest of time, I'm kind of paraphrasing, okay? So the brother's kind of like, you know, poo-poo David a little bit, like, uh, well, you know, what are you asking about that for, you know, so forth, so on. And David, he, he I love David because he ignored them. He paid no attention. To their, to their words. He put no imagination on their words. Right? And ultimately, he confronts the, the, the giant. I'm fast-tracking. Verse 46 to 48. This day, David speaking, will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air, and to the wild beasts of the earth, and all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. He said this before. Verse 47. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and with spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. Verse 48 brings it right home. And it came to pass. When the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to, to meet David, that David hasted or ran quickly and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. We know the, the outcome. He ran toward Goliath, used the, the stones. I think he had like three or five, excuse me, five stones. I think Goliath had four brothers. And he took one, sunk it right into his forehead, knocked him out cold, took his own, took Goliath's own sword, cut off the head. When the Israelites saw that, of course the Philistines were, were, were afraid now. You know the story. They routed the Philistines. David received the gold. He became, he went from shepherd boy to prince. Why? Because the king said, I will give you my daughter as a bride. She was a princess. That day he became a prince. Because of his words, his heart, his passion. And he said, this is what's going to happen to you. And it did. So, what have we learned today? The power of your words are very, very significant. The prophets of old. Kings were afraid. And they would call for the prophet. He would speak the word. 
and it changed the entire dynamic. God gave us the same ability. Consider Psalms 82, chapter 82, verse 6. I have said, ye are gods, small g, and all of you are children of the Most High. Book of John, verse, chapter 10, verse 34. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, ye are gods? Small g. Small g. Meaning we can do many of the things that our Father can do. My sons can do what I do. Three of them are musicians. They play very well. They have my DNA. Well, if we are children of the Most High, we have His DNA. And when we speak, things happen. What are you doing with your words? What are you saying? What aren't you saying? I encourage you today to say great things, speaking those things that are not as though they were. I am wealthy. My, my finances are blessed. God's favor is on my house. God's favor is on my job. My future is blessed and hidden in Christ. Maybe you feel challenged today. Maybe things aren't going the way you thought they would. What are you saying? In spite of what it looks like, Goliath was pretty large. In spite of his size, in spite of the, the, the weight of his spear and the length of his sword, David said, and he, Goliath died that day in front of all of Israel. What are you saying? Speak to your giants. Decree a thing. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that this thing that's been plaguing me, this thing that I'm concerned about, is done. It's resolved in Jesus' name. I challenge you today to use your words. And if you're not using them, use your imagination. Use it with scripture. Amen. So, thank you for watching my video today. I hope it blessed you. And we will see you next time.